Hey, I'm Les Cookson, the inventor of the Lucy Drawing Tool. And if you're watching this video, you should own a Lucy Pro or a Lucy Flex. And thank you so much for, for buying my product. I wanted to give a little bit of a, some tips and tricks and kind of show you how to use your Lucy, get more out of it in terms of getting the right lighting. Now, what I have here is Lucy Pro. In terms of um, the filters and the lighting, the optics are the same. So it's gonna be the same whether you have this model or you have the Lucy Flex. But I'm using the Lucy Pro, because right here I have, I have hot glued to it a, um, a phone case into which I snapped my cell phone and so that I can record the image down on here. And right now I will go ahead and hit record and I've started recording the image as it's shown on my paper here. So you, you can see how the image changes while I change the, 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 the different filters and things. So you can see the first thing you see here is that I'm looking at these, these two optical toys and um, they're, they're too high. Um, they're going off the edge of the, the paper. And so as I push them back, they get smaller and higher. As I pull them forward, they get larger and lower. And they get that close, they're like too big, they're kind of coming off the edge of the pages right here. So I'm gonna push it back to about right there, but then you loosen the knobs on the bottom here and rock the Lucy back and forth. And you can see how that changes. So I'm gonna rock it about right there until we're saying we need to make, see look, I'm trying to rock it, but it's the image is too, still too um, large. So I just gotta push that back a little further to shrink it a little more. There we go. You can't center something on a piece of paper if it's larger than the paper. So you gotta make sure you push it back until it's the right size. And there it is, centered on my paper, right where I can draw it. I can see the image. I can see uh, my pencil here, but um, I wanna use an optical filter to make the image a little bit brighter, make it a little easier to draw. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is hold the filters up here. I'm holding the lighter filter. You see how this image gets brighter. Um, the, uh, my phone has a little bit of difficulty focusing sometimes when I'm holding different objects at different distances, but you get the idea. I put in the, um, the darker filter, ooh, even, even, brighter, even brighter image, that's better, right? But now if I can bind them, because you can put them both in there, brighter still. So that's, that's what I should do, right? I should put the, the two together and have this bright, bright, crisp image, but pick up your pencil. You can't even see your pencil, your hands, your marks, you'll be drawing blind. The point is not to get the image to be as bright as possible. The point is to find a balance where you see the image and your pencil and pencil marks at the same time. So looking at this, either one of these two filters accomplished. I actually like the lighter, the lighter filter because I want to be able to make sure I see my pencil and pencil marks well. And so then once I've decided that's the one I'm going to use, I'm going to place the filter in there. And there it is. Now, that's one of the most important things and one of the most common problems people have is that they, they make the image so bright that they can't see the pencil and pencil marks and they're not able to draw anymore. And so that's something I want to show you there is that if you just keep trying to make the image ooh, brighter, oh, the darker one's even brighter, even brighter with both of them, you lost your, your image. Right here is perfect where you can, you can draw the subject here. Forgive my phone that keeps frantic, frantically focusing in and out you can make your marks. And then if you wanted to as well, because even without the filter, you get a, get an okay image there. And you can kind of, sometimes when you want, when you're starting out and you're blocking out some of the larger outlines, it's nice to have the image be a little bit dimmer. So maybe you have it right here to, to block out some of the, the basic outlines and get some of the, the broad, the broad shapes. And when you're going to do more detail, then you put in the, the filter to get more detail, to add um, another layer of detail in there. And you can do that by placing it in there, or you can just hold it in your hand if you just want real fast to see real quickly what's there and move it, you know, place it over there real fast to see something, then move it. You can, the filters are a tool that you find the correct balance, but then depending on what part of your drawing you're doing, you may want to start with a little dimmer image, then as you progress, add a filter to, to brighten up the image and um, to get your entire sketch that you need. And so let me talk a little bit about the color of the paper. Um, taking the filter out again, this is white paper. 
most what most commonly people will use. But if you use a different color of paper, it's going to adjust that image. It's going to change that image. The image is going to look different. So here I have some gray tone. I'll throw that down there. And the image is brighter than it would have been on just the white. Um, let me grab that white again. There we go. If I put those side by side, you see a difference there. That on the gray tone, you don't, well, you won't need any filter on this gray tone. Yeah, I'd say the gray tone makes the image about as bright as the light filter, even without the filter. So you got the gray tone there. Now, if you take black paper that I have here, you're going to get brighter still. Look at that. Look at that. That's about as bright as it is with the dark filter, but with no filter at all. You see they're side by side. Here's the gray. Here's the black. But the thing is, is because you're using dark paper rather than a dark filter, you can still see your hand. Even though the image is as bright as it would be with the, the darker filter where your hand totally disappears, you can still see your hand just fine. So that's why um, you'll notice in the, um, the art, the drawing pencil sets that we sell, we make sure we have medium that you can use on regular white paper, like regular pencils and color pencils and water color, color pencils. But we also have mediums that you can use on dark surfaces, um, black or dark surfaces. We have earth tones and white pencils. We have metallic color pencils so that if you want to experiment with different colors of paper to help make the image a little more crisp or just, just a, it's, it's a, adds, a, adds a little more versatility what you can do. And then you can draw on this dark paper with the, uh, with the white pencils or with the earth tones. Or with uh, some of these metallic, metallic color pencils. Now, if the image, you might see sometimes this image is, is, is pretty rich. If you want to make it a little dimmer to see your marks a little bit more, you can put the filter in the front so the image just suddenly got dimmer. So you can't even see, for example, right here, you see that that's that um, metallic kind of pink I used. You can't really see it without that filter in there very well. But when you put the filter in, you see how it, how it now appears. So you can put filters in the front to dim the brightness of the image, to be able to make the pencil marks show up more distinctly. And again, that's something you may want to do um, depending on where you are in your drawing. So in summary, you're looking for a proper balance between the image and the sub, the image of the subject, and then your, your drawing pencil and your pencil marks. And you can brighten that image by using the filters, like I showed you in the beginning, or if you want to experiment with darker shades of paper, that's another way of brightening the image. Now, one thing you may notice is if you're doing all of this and your hand or the subject is not dim, but blurry, that could be an issue that you have with, with maybe with your vision. So if you wear, for example, bifocal or trifocal lenses, basically what that means is that you have two different prescriptions for lenses in one pair of glasses. And so, you know, the prescription for close things is towards the bottom and the prescription for viewing things in the distance are on the top. So if you're looking through your Lucy, what are you, um, which part of the lens are you looking through? Are you looking part through the part of the lens on the bottom that's for close things, oh, then yeah, then you may be able to see the paper just fine. But if you're looking at like a landscape that's, that's distant, it's gonna be blurry. Or if you're looking through the part of your glasses that's for things in the distance, and you're looking at a landscape or something across the room, and then your hand and your pencil marks are gonna be blurry because you're looking through the wrong part of the lens. Now my recommendation is that this is an issue for you, is to try to get a pair of glasses that aren't transitional, that aren't bifocal, that are something that's more for a medium distance, maybe for something between you know, 20 to 24 inches, the distance between um, uh, 
the top of your Lucy, between 18 and 20 inches, something for close, close up, like some reading glasses. And then put your subject at about the same distance. So if this is 20 inches here, put something that's about 20 inches there. So that way, when you're looking through them with your, with your reading glasses, um, you can see them both at the same time and focus on them simultaneously. Now, this is not, this is something that um, if you have, if you don't have bifocals or trifocals, it's not something you need to worry about. It is something sometimes, even if you're somebody who doesn't wear glasses, if you're looking at your paper here, and I'm looking at something that's a landscape, your eyes are going to focus on the landscape differently than something that's 20 inches away from you. So then you're kind of drawing, you're kind of focus, choosing which to focus on at which time. So you're kind of focusing on the landscape as you're drawing, but your pencil marks are going to look blurry. So you just kind of have to draw line, then focus on your pencil drawings. Okay, you see that they look good. Okay, focus back on the landscape again. And then you can, you can, you can draw that way. But the thing with bifocals and trifocals is that you actually have a lens that's forcing you to focus on either close or far. So um, if, you can, if you can not use the, the glasses or if you can get a pair of reading glasses that are for close distances that aren't transitional or bifocal, that'll give you the best chance of using the Lucy.